My name is Adrian Becker. I'm the CISO for the Clear Springs Group. I'm also acting as a virtual CISO for numerous organizations, including organizations working in legal, financial, non for profit, manufacturing, and the numerous other organizations. What we're going to hope today to cover is why all organizations need a 24 7 managed detection and response service, how it works why does this is important to be able to respond quickly and how do you actually get started with the secure 365 and your microsoft journey we will be going through a few slides as today however i want to spend more time on actually how the system works and how you can deal with it if you have any questions during the session please type them in and we'll look to answer all of these at the end If we start off a little bit about Softworks, Softworks is a Microsoft security specialist. We've, been, we've got experience of over 20 years in IT and security, and we run it, a managed detection and response service out of our Cambridge Security Operations Center. We have numerous accreditations, including Cyber Essentials Plus, Microsoft Solution Partner and Security. For the people who don't know, it used to be there used to be a gold, but that's been superseded. Also have ISO 9001, 27001, and numerous other key accreditations. Now, what we've seen for most organizations, security has become a real challenge. And we I'm not going to try and teach you what you already know, but we have seen that you just have to turn on the news that budgets is becoming limited. We're also seeing that support is very much complex. So many products that you have to support. And these days, threat actors are operating on a 24-7, 365 basis, which means that from your business point of view, there is no downtime. From your support team, there is no more downtime. We're also seeing the increased regulations on a continuous basis. And for most organizations, we all get these calls every day that says, buy the product A because it's better than product B. And we have seen the security market space become very crowded with lots of different solutions that is not really connected up or don't work well. They might be best in class in one particular silo, but don't provide you with that comprehensive uh, protection. And finally, the cybersecurity risk is becoming unsurable. We see that more and more at the moment with organizations where they cannot get the insurance or if they do, certain exclusions apply. So from an organization's point of view, no longer is it enough just to have insurance. These days, you need to be able to demonstrate and protect your own organization on a 24 seven basis. So the question we get quite often is, should I buy a security operations center or build it myself? And most organizations start with the position, let's try and build it ourselves. And what we are finding at the moment is that being able to build it yourself is a significant investment in a completely different skill set to most organizations have. We're seeing, for example, security operation centers or managed detection response used to be able to be afforded by the large organization banks or big financial institutions but for most mid-market solutions organizations they cannot actually build their own 24 7 security operation center that's effective because it costs millions and even if they do have a security team that security team needs to be significantly larger than what most organizations can afford so from a, from most um, organizations you really need to start thinking about how am i going to deal with my security on a 24 7 basis and i'll just end the slide with the national cyber security center recommends that you have an effective monitoring in place on a 24 7 basis and being able to respond to security threats to your business on a 24 7 basis so let's talk a little bit about what is secure 365 Secure 365 is um, Softworks managed detection response solution based around Microsoft Security and Microsoft Sentinel. And I'm going to mention Microsoft a lot during the day because we very much have a Microsoft first approach, 
but not Microsoft only. So for organizations, as we go through today, you will find that we can integrate other solutions, but from the Secure 365 service, we leverage Microsoft Sentinel as the main security SIEM solution. We've built Secure 365 on Microsoft security. The reason for that is Microsoft is spending 20 billion over the next five years on security. They now one of the biggest security providers and they're also leader in numerous magic quadrants according Gardner, Forrester and numerous others. And what this means for you is you know that you've signed up to a significant security player in the market. We with Secure365 leveraged all of these Defender products that we mentioned and then is able to bring that into Microsoft Sentinel, which is a security incident and event management solution from Microsoft, which means that you can get all of these events in a single pane of glass. So no longer do you have to worry about logging into different systems to understand what is happening in your environment. You can finally get that true single pane of glass because every single incident is triaged, all of the events is analyzed, and if there's a security incident, it gets locked, uh, in, uh, registered in Microsoft Sentinel. And what we will do then is triage those suspicious incident using one of our UK security analysts to analyze those and take action or notify you as appropriate. So I did touch a little bit on Microsoft. But for a lot of organizations, they don't actually realize that they own the solution or they already own the security and what a big player Microsoft is. And we used to have regular demos or webinars with organizations where they just say, we didn't realize how much Microsoft security has changed. And I just wanted to highlight a few items here at the moment. You've got the 65 trillion signals being analyzed um, daily. You've also got the increased attacks that they're protecting from, the billions of um, threats that they've blocked, and also sites that they keep uh, blocking. Microsoft is now a very serious player. I think I read this morning uh, on one of the security websites that Microsoft has identified a breach into Microsoft Office 365, not directly into 365 itself, but because they were able to intercept the security tokens from leaders around the world. Um, this was a st state sponsored hack and they are now able to identify that and deploy that technology back into their environment. So we are seeing that Microsoft are now notifying the Pentagon, notifying large countries or large executives of organizations that they are being breached or that they are under attack, that their systems are potentially compromised because there is no such thing as 100% security. Let's be honest, everybody will suffer a breach at some time, but it's trying to mitigate you against the everyday attack and the regular attacks. If you are being targeted by, for example, a China nation state attack, it's very difficult on occasions as they have an army of people trying to break into the environment. But being part of the Microsoft security stack, we benefit from all of the research and identification that is happening. And a question that I do get, well, I don't really need a 24-7 security operations center. I don't need to manage detection response because we'll get to it on Monday. And I think that is what's changed. This was the case in a few years ago where we only had to worry about the occasional crypto logger, but the criminals have changed their approach. We're seeing that on average, once you've clicked on a potential phishing email, it takes 72 minutes on average for the criminal to get access to your data or start moving through the system. We're also seeing that within two hours or hour and 42, if I want to be exact, that organizations has compromised the device, has moved laterally and has inside your whole network. So no longer can we just say, well, we can relax. We don't have to worry about it. We will come back to it on Monday. You now need to be able to try and shut them down within that first golden hour, as I like to call it, where you stop the attack happening into the environment. That means that if you have a compromise, you need to be able to respond to that on a 24 seven basis. So, 
So if we talk about a bit more about Microsoft, we can see that having that Microsoft first approach to security is very important. The reason being is Microsoft, is, as I mentioned, is now the serious uh, security player. We're also seeing everything that they are moving forward. So for example, with Entra, all of the Defender solutions, the Defender for DevOps, we're just seeing significant investment around security. And it also means that for organizations, you probably actually own all of this technology and you've not just that, it will simplify your operations so that if you've made a change, you know that it's happening across your estate. No longer do you have to go and reconfigure it in five or six different locations. You can now make sure that all of these siloed products from your organization don't need to be configured individually. Now you can make the change and know that it's happening throughout the system. And for organizations, a lot of what we will discuss on today is already included. For example, you've got the business premium license for up to 300 users, have most of the security you need, or well, does have all the security you need in place already to leverage Secure 365 and run a Microsoft Security Operations Center. You've also have the ability to review with the security add-ons for the large organization, what third-party products can you retire? Do I really still need the traditional antivirus? solution what else do i need from security and for the users they just they know microsoft already they know it's completely transparent and it actually improves the user experience all of that said it's great but why secure 365 and we like to call it different by design but everybody says they are different they secure so let's actually look why Secure 365 is different by design. Firstly, it's a secure solution. When I say secure, nothing leaves your environment. All of the data, all of the changes, everything that we manage, every rule we publish to you, you keep. It's in your environment. So firstly, there's nothing that leaves the environment, which means that from a security point of view, you know that your data is secure. We are guests inside your tenant inside your environment if you that means as well everything is transparent no longer are you sending us your logs it disappears into a little black box and nobody knows what's happening you can view every single action you can view every single event and incident and see exactly what the analyst has done to investigate that incident why it was closed and what what how long it took to action it also means that you stay in control because hopefully you will never leave Softworks once you have the service. But if you decide that you would like to leave Softworks, you literally all you have to do is remove our access and you retain everything that was done inside your environment. And that is very different from most organizations because they normally need a proprietary piece of software installed or they want you to send their logs to, to them. And when you decide to leave, guess what? You lose all access. But with Secure365, you retain all of that and you stay in full control. Also, the technology is not proprietary. Yes, it's based around Microsoft, but we can see the investment that Microsoft is making. It is significant. It is not slowing down the investment. They are just keep uh, producing more, which means that from your point of view, there is nothing in there that we've designed that you can't manage or keep control of in the event of um, not using the service. It's also very affordable. For most organizations, we use the price of 10 pounds per user per month or per server or per resource. We can very quickly which, uh, help you calculate what the monthly cost would be. And for most organizations, this costs, the service costs less than a single one or two analysts. And we're seeing for the organizations that they are, can finally buy into a proper 24-7 managed detection response service where previously it was cost prohibitive. And it's future proof. Microsoft's not going anywhere. They're one of the leading companies in the world. We're seeing that they are investing, which means that the technology you're buying into isn't changing. It will be enhanced, it will be improved, but it's not going anywhere, which is different from a lot of the organizations because every day you hear, let's buy X, let's buy Y, but Microsoft is enhancing all of their security continuously 
and including it in most of their licenses. So if we look a little bit more at the service, which is important, what we do for for the service is we provide the 24 seven managed detection and response. That means we will take all of your alerts, all of your incidents coming from your Defender 4, your firewalls, your um, anti-spam, any of your services that you're running in your information. We will triage those services. We will look at the detection and we will respond to those services. It means that from your point of view, you know that you will be contacted if there's anything that needs to be actioned or if we do identify a workstation that's been compromised or somebody's email address, we can isolate that um, device or we can disable the user. Anything more than that, we will work with you. It also means that we then feed into your into your cyber incident response or if you don't have it, we can help provide it via a third party. But our team will provide that technical input into your incident response team, which will help you make the decision. What is the compromise that's happened in your environment? What is the impact? What do we need to do? And by having people on site immediately remotely that can investigate what that incidents are, you know that you can make a business decision very quickly. For example, do we invoke DR? Do we need to notify the ICO? What do we need to do to keep our organization running? And we will help technically feed into your incident response team or give you access to a service by IT governance, which will provide you with four hours of legal advice to help you with that response. And finally, we will also look at helping you improve your secure score because security never rests. It's a moving target. Every day something new is happening. Every day we're seeing different incidents that's happening. So part of what we will do is work with you and provide you with advice on how to improve your posture, how to improve the security in your environment and how to make it safer for you as an organization. We also have guaranteed service levels and um, we'll touch on these. Yes, we have the one hour SLA for high incidents, but on average we spend between a typical response time at the moment is about five minutes average. The service is also delivered by security staff that is based in the UK and I think that is quite unique for a lot of the organizations. We have seen that, that they are based around the world and or into different countries but we've made the conscious decision to have our security analysts UK based which means that they're all highly experienced Microsoft accredited and also DBS and security checked. It means that they have, from your point of view, you can rest assured there's 24 seven eyes on your system by professionals that are as fully qualified and security cleared. Now, this is the slide that I actually enjoy the most because this is actually what's happening technically. And from a point of view, what do I get for my money? if I put it in a blunt speak for management, what would do? What are we actually paying for? What are you paying for if you take the service? Firstly, the security team maintains your analytic rules. That means that they will review the rules. Is it, are they appropriate for your environment? Do they make sense? Are they creating excessive noise? Can we leverage those rules? Can we train them, can we publish new rules that is unique to environment and we will also maintain the main rules that is happening inside regularly. So for example, I work with some customers who do not didn't even realize that they need to maintain rules. So we have the experts that will maintain those rules for you on an ongoing basis and coming back to my earlier mention, any rules we publish for you, you keep that we won't ever remove them out of your system unless they've gone old or has been superseded. But anything we do, you keep. We will also leverage and do advanced threat hunting. So we will, anything we discover, we will look through previous events, understand what those incidents were, and then create additional rules to help monitor for similar incidents moving forward if it's unique to your environment. But the team for any threat that they will see will go off and threat hunt and make sure that the system is not compromised or 
do searches around those particular incidents to see if there's anything else that they spotted that could potentially have an impact. It also means that in the future, if there was an incident or anything that you needed more information on, the team are able to go and query the system to understand exactly what's happening in that systems. We also maintain the threat intelligence for the organization. That means we will we cooperate and work with other organizations, bringing as much threat intelligence into your environment, maintaining the threat connectors and making sure that we keep those up to date. And we also contribute to those threat intelligence because we are a big believer in everybody should improve their security. We will help configure and deploy bespoke lock collectors. So Microsoft Sentinel have about a few hundred that you can get out the box, but there's also lock collection that we need to create special um, servers or special units to collect those locks from systems. And a good example will be if you have some legacy system that you want need to send locks to, or you have a unique firewall. But we will work with you and create those lock collectors to bring that information into Sentinel, normalize the events, and then able to query it. We will also deal with automation and automatic response um, for the organization. So if we're seeing the same type of incidents or we're seeing the same type of system events, we will automate that and, and also deal with the response. For example, this could be as simple as we're seeing attacks against your environment from a specific IP address. We can change that, that, they, uh, that it will go and update the firewall rules to block it. We will help you with, we've got the, automated ticketing system to make sure that nothing gets missed from our customers and also provide secure communication back into your environment. We will help and maintain live dashboards. So why, what's live dashboards for some of the organizations? Because none of the data ever leaves your environment, there's none of the reports being written and sent externally to you, to you on a monthly basis. What we try and do is build live dashboards showing you live what actions the team has taken, what information you would like to report to your management team, what information matters to you as a business. So we are able to maintain those dashboards and help you present and the information that is right for the organizations. And finally, we also maintain your watch list. This is what which of your users are critical. What data is critical in your environment? What areas are sensitive? And a good example for this would be for is HR data or payroll or um, anything that is unique to the business that's got your, your key information inside your organization. So we very much will maintain those watch lists, build rules around those particular individual data and be able to generate incidents and report back to you. And a good example would be you have the HR data and we see that somebody has accessed the system that wasn't previously added, or we can see that the administrator went and made somebody part of the HR group suddenly. We can trigger all of those events and verify that those were true events or that that was somebody acting suspiciously. So if we look at the service then, we get all of the alerts from Defender for Identity, Defender, Endpoint, Office, Cloud Apps, Azure, Azure for example, your AWS environments, anything that's on-prem if you want. You can also bring in your IoT devices, firewalls, et cetera, as I mentioned. This is all sent into the Microsoft Sentinel system where we lever where Microsoft and we leverage machine learning, look at behavior, triage and correlate all of those events and then generate incidents. Once the incident is generated, the Softex team on a 24 seven will review those incident, action them if they need to, provide remediation guidance to you or your the IT team or your outsource team, because we have seen this before. A number of organizations will say, well, we use a managed service partner, which is great, but that is not a security service partner. And there's a big difference between managing support and security. But we will provide guidance. We run it on a 24-7 basis and we will continue tuning 
and manage that system for you. And that includes your log collectors. But if we take, for example, an incident that's come in, we will look at that and if needed, we will generate a case and notify you either by email if it's relatively a low incident or teams that the number of staff organizations prefer inside them tenant, or you will get a phone call. And we've seen this many a times where we have calls that we need to put out at one o'clock, two o'clock in the morning or 11 o'clock at night, where we will pick up the phone and saying, we have observed X, Y, and Z, we recommend that we take this action. Can we please have your approval? Do you want us to take this action or not? Or we'll give you guidance regarding what we are seeing and what we recommend the next step would be. But the team will engage with you or with your management team to respond to any incidents, which means that from your point of view, you can sleep at night knowing that if something happens, there will be somebody that's monitoring your system and reporting back to you. So, as I mentioned, it all goes into Microsoft Sentinel, and Sentinel is the single pane of glass that will show you what's happening and will be resided inside your tenant, which means that you can see all of your incidents in the last 24 hours, 30 days, 90 days, and you can configure this to retain it for a year if you have a compliance to keep all of your items for a year. But everything we do will happen inside Microsoft Sentinel inside your tenant. Now, this was an example that I just want to bring it to life a little bit where we had a, an attack that came in. So we've, the system was running inside this particular organization for about a month and a half when we observed uh, activity where somebody has actually clicked on a, a well, not clicked, they, they executed a script in an Excel spreadsheet which then created a secure connection out to the internet which then allowed the criminals to have a connection back into the environment we very quickly observed that there was lateral movement taking place that they were trying to intercept some passwords the security team immediately picked up the phone to the team at this particular customer asked them if they were testing the service or are they doing anything suspicious on this particular device? Because guess what? IT administrators do occasionally run tools they shouldn't or investigating problems. Immediately it was notified, no, it was not the case. And we are then very much connected to the machine, isolated it, and it was isolated within five minutes of the, of the from the first connection being established and lateral movement observed. The team was then able to see exactly what they've touched, verify that nothing else was exfiled and verify that the data, um, nothing was tampered with. And But we could also see the accounts that was potentially touched and change those passwords and tokens. What was interesting, this came through a Mimecast, which, and the response from Mimecast was, well, you should rewrite Excel spreadsheets into PDFs. Well, kind of pointless because this Excel spreadsheet was expected. And because Yes, scripts are not enabled by default, but for this particular customer, they have quite a complex Excel spreadsheets and do need to enable scripts. So it looks like one of their customers got com uh, compromised, sending it back to them. That got enabled, then they then let potential access into the environment. And this went through a different antivirus solution. We completely missed the connection but Defender picked it up. So in this particular case, they've made the conscious decision to move everything to Microsoft. Now, what I would like to do is show you quickly the anatomy of attack and demo how the system will work because I'm conscious of time. What I've done here is, this is a shell command that is being executed and run in the background on a workstation without the users knowing this could be a script. This is what they call a password list attack, which means that I don't need, uh, sorry, a file list attack, which means there's no file that speaks execute. It's a command, it's a script. It could be anything that's running in an Excel spreadsheet. What this will then do is will trigger an incident inside Microsoft Sentinel. The SOC analyst will immediately pick that the new alert has come in and start investigating it. And what they will be able to do is visualize what that particular incident is and the timeline that is happening. This gives them then the ability to start understanding what's the next 
best step is are do they need to go and run numerous crystal queries or do they need to connect into the defender for endpoint defender for office or to the workstation directly in this particular case they are going to connect into um, defender for endpoint which means that they are able to go and connect in to go and investigate more what's happening. So in more detail, they are very quickly able to visualize that the suspicious event was happening. They can then go and look exactly what was executed. And that's a big part. What was executed? What commands was run? What was the user doing right before they were actually this potential compromise happened? And what else? is happening on site that workstation so you get a very quickly get a full timeline of the incident that is happening and they are able to visualize and in this particular case now connecting to the machine understanding more about that particular incident and will now physically connect onto the machine to get more information so what the user will what the SOC analyst will do is actually connect into the workstation they are then able to see very quickly what is on that machine is there missing vulnerabilities or is there any particular issues but what the first step would normally be is let's go and collect some investigation they will kick off the investigation because that not only preserve evidence it provides us with a lot of activity regarding what's happening on the workstation at the same time antivirus scan will be executed just as a second layer of defense automatically while the investigation run but they are now able to start proactively decide what they're going to do so for example restrict the app execution or initiate a live response because we need to find some more information on the workstation they can connect to that system directly in the background to see what's happening on that system we as i mentioned because every single activity is recorded, there's a detailed timeline regarding what the user did, what did they touch, what, what the commands was that was executed that co caused a potential compromise to the system. But we can then actually isolate the environment. As I mentioned, we can then take the action and respond to it. What you also have very much with Microsoft Sentinel is that was just one of the resources that we can bring in those particular incidents into. You also have a number of other connectors. So as you can see, this is an example of a customer who has about 24 different connectors that they've connected into the environment, which include things like um, Azure, Sportinet, uh, Mimecast, all of these you can bring in there's about 250 different connectors and from what i normally advise customers try and bring as much as you can into it you yes you pay for the volume of logs to bring in with microsoft but let's try and optimize those logs let's try and keep that cost down and we are seeing that more and more data is being fed into the system for organizations but from your point of view, from an organization's point of view, the more information you can provide into the system, the more accurate information and potential threats can be identified and correlated. Touching a little bit again on the rules, a little bit, I know I mentioned the rules that's being maintained, but this is a, as an example as well in Sentinel, what the team will do is they will maintain these rules, which gives you the chance to see exactly what those are. They are published in your environment. You can go and view those rules, but these are maintained regularly and at least on a monthly basis, completely republished and updated as needed because the logic changes regularly or we will create some custom rules specific for your environment to respond to an incidents for future incidents. So I'll give an example. Um, in the group, we have a uh, rule that says, show me any client that potentially connected without Zscaler being active. Because I am, from my point of view, I need to know that Zscaler is running on a particular endpoint. If not, I want to know why, get that investigation, get that escalated to the, the right team member. But these rules will be maintained. The intelligence fed into the environment via the connectors and correlated which means that, that the team can threat hunt in your environment. Mentioned we will publish 
workbooks into the system. This will give you all of your information. So this is an example for a customer in the where they can see exactly what's happened to the environment in the last 30 days. These are dynamic reports. You can go and select them regularly. You can drop down. You can investigate more the stats behind these. But this is a, this organization is about 400 staff and we can see that they had 825 incidents in 30 days. But what you'll be able to see then very quickly as well is the number of incidents that's happening, what type they are. You can be able to surface that information that you can present back to your management team to say, this is why, how many incidents we had over the last 30 days. These are the main type of attacks we're seeing or risks to the business. But we can also look at how long it took us to to respond to it. So very imp more important metrics that I always like to use is mean time to detect, mean time to respond. And from our point of view, the mean time to detect from Microsoft is about two and a half minutes, three minutes. Mean time to respond, we have a maximum of a one hour of mean time to respond for high incidents. Typically it's under five minutes. This all sounds normally exciting and then I get the question pricing. For most organizations, because you already own the licenses, you just need to pay for the service. So for business premium customers, for example, we will see things like um, sub 300. If they normally run standard 10 pounds per user per month. And but it very much depends on what licenses you have, what type of locks you bring into the service. Uh, so that we can determine. But if you speak to your account manager or reach out afterwards, we can very much help you understand the pricing, that model that works. There is additional discount for non-for-profit organizations. To remember, all of the logs goes into your environment. So the Sentinel cost is yours and you're probably already paying for it. But also all of the tools that you need, you most likely already own, or if not, it's a small change to your Microsoft license, which you can normally cover by retiring a number of the third party solutions that organizations run inside the system. But please speak to your account manager if you want to go through more of these. What I would also like to highlight is some um, testimonials from our customers. We've got, we've got numerous different customers running the service. We've got uh, financial services, for example. We've got non-for-profit. We've got legal, but we've with manufacturing, we've seen more and more organization needed. It doesn't matter the size that you are, right down from 25, 50 users, right up to two, 3,000. Typically, you need to run a, some sort of managed detection response on a 24-7 basis because the landscape has changed. It's getting more difficult to deal with these type of incidents and security incidents on a regular basis. So please, if you hopefully this was a whistle stop tour of Secure 365, uh, we would like to invite you now to for some questions. But if you haven't, if you haven't asked any questions, then please go ahead. I'll give you a few minutes while I just mention social media. Please sign up for our monthly newsletter where a lot of information will be provided. And what I will do now is start looking at some of the questions that's come into it and I'll try and publish these. Um, I'll start the first one. We run on multi-cloud. I see a connector for that, but how does using these connectors impact the performance of the system? And I'm going to publish this question so everybody can see that. The connectors, what we do is the connectors sh shouldn't really impact the system. What we have for the connectors is that will bring in um, the logs from your AWS environment, your um, Google Apps, or whatever environments that you are connected, we should be bringing the, in those logs into the system. I will mention that, for example, deploying some of these connectors onto the service, for example, or deploying Defender for Endpoint Server or Defender for Server onto some of your server environment will have an impact because 
every activity is recorded. For most organizations, it's completely transparent, um, but we have seen in some incidents instances where the potentially the hardware or the environment is under spec that they could impact some of the logs. But we can leverage again AWS Azure to help you publish um, those log collectors to try and keep that impact as a minimum of your main production environments. Um, the cost of Sentinel, we're bringing all the logs are very high for non-profit compared to other vendors. Is this being seen by other companies? I think what we need to try and do is optimize those logs. And what you will see with other vendors, they normally try and ask you to pre-purchase a set number of um, gigabytes or set number of data. With Microsoft, there's a number of uh, benefits that you can do from it uh, from non-for-profits point of view. Obviously, you get the 5,000, uh, I need to confirm that, I think it's $5,000. I haven't looked if they've changed it since the 1st of July on the um, free credits that you can leverage for a spinning up uh, environment. But you can leverage that free credits to help offset the cost of Sentinel. The other bit that I would say is if you got any of the N365 E5 logs or using Defender for Server Plan 2, there's a number of the logs already covered and you do get a quota to help reduce cost. The other bit is that you do get a number of the logs for free from Microsoft. Where you do see a quite a cost is normally around the firewalls. Um, bringing all the firewall logs in. But what we will try and do is work with you, understand where those logs come in, make sure that they are beneficial. Why are we collecting them? Does it actually add uh, benefit to you, the organization? And if it does, uh, we'll, we'll recommend how to do it. But, but also, can we optimize? Can we drop some of the logs that's being ingested? Do we need all of the data coming into that point of view? few more questions that I have in here. I'm just going to see some of the ones that we've published. Um, we run multi-cloud. I think I published that. I might have published the wrong question there earlier. We are highly regulated. What are the main benefits from a compliance point of view? Well, as you are very much, as you are regulated, the benefits are you are able to demonstrate that you are retaining all of your logs, that you're managing all of the systems. So this feeds into your ISO 27001. This will help with your HIPAA compliance or for organizations that need to have NIST compliance or SOC compliance. Very much from your point of view, having a managed detection response, having a SIEM solution is absolutely critical because you've got to demonstrate that you are maintaining those logs and, main, and monitoring and managing and responding to those logs. So from a point of view, having those logs collected is absolutely critical. Retaining them and evidencing that you are responding to those incidents are critical. And more importantly, not just from a regulation point of view, if you did really have an incident, you, there's a very good chance we are able to intercept and stop that incident. However, from a regulation point of view, if you didn't have it in place, there will probably be more questions asked of you, but happy to have a more in-depth discussion. Reach out to me afterwards. Another one of the questions is, how is the software service licensed? The, the software service license is per user or per resource. Um, so we work on the number of licensed users you have here in your environment and then work on the number of resources. Resources, for example, can be servers or um, resources in Azure, AWS. But we can, again, we will do that discovery with you to understand the resources, but we keep it very simple. We base it on the users plus resources, giving you a fixed price each month for the service to run the service. And I just want to go back. There's a few more couple of questions coming in, but I wanted to just double check if I've missed any questions before I go back up and just answer the last question. Perfect. No, I haven't missed anything. And we are a typical Sentinel. What are the typical Sentinel costs for a 350 seed deployment? Um, as I mentioned, we do need to just have a look at what services you're running, which connector, but if I'm going to try and go back without losing everything, a few slides back is 
I work on a basis of 10 pounds per user per month is a good average. Um, I don't know what organization or what rule, uh, what systems you're running, but if we saying 350 users, that's about three and a half thousand pounds per month. Um, if you're using that one service, it's 3,800, but for, that is not even the cost of a single, um, a single SOC analyst. So we, we can work with you and if you're non-for-profit, we can look at uh, doing something around how we can optimize the pricing, but please reach out. We can help with you, but as a rule of thumb, base it on 10 pounds per user um, per month and uh, and 10 pounds per resource. So if I don't know, 350 users with 10 servers is you'll base it on 3,600 pounds a month. Just having a look if there's anything I haven't, uh, which I've missed. Hopefully not from what I can see. Thank you very much everyone for the questions. And as I say, please, please reach out to myself or your account manager or to Softworks. I will just finish off with my details right at the end. My contact details, but feel free. And if there's anything else or anything that I haven't actually addressed, please don't hesitate to contact us. Thank you very much.